My name is Vito and I'm a business automation specialist and an active campaign certified consultant. Today I'm going to show you how to create a contact form in active campaign that redirects to a Calendly call scheduler upon submission of the form. Let's first ask ourselves the following. Why would we want to do this? If you sell a product or service that requires a phone conversation to make a sale, this is a sleek little workflow that will help you book more calls with prospects. Now the contact form could be on your contact page or could even be on a landing page at the top of a sales funnel to which you drive paid traffic, traffic like Google AdWords or Facebook ads. Whatever the case may be, this workflow is built in mind for a salesperson or sales teams. One last benefit to building contact forms with an active campaign and embedding those forms on your site is that all form submissions that then automatically arrive in your active campaign contact database. So, by building this workflow, you can both save time and convert more leads into actual phone conversations. So real quickly, let me show you exactly how this works. First, let's navigate to my site and you'll see that I actually practice what I preach. I'll fill in the form, now I click Get Free Consultation. That redirects me to Calendly where I can now book an appointment. I'll do that now. This results in the following. As a salesperson, I receive a notification of this form submission. Second, also on the sales side, the contact is now in the system and we've created a deal for the contact. Third, and lastly for the salesperson, we may have a call booked, which we could see here. Fourth, as for the prospect, the prospect has a calendar appointment booked, which we can see here. And lastly, if the prospect had not booked the appointment, he receives an email with Calendly link in case he wants to book a call later. You'll notice that the workflow has two steps. Think of this like a shopping cart on an e-commerce site. Even if the prospect does not follow through with step two by completing the first action, we have captured valuable prospect information. It's my experience that about 75% of leads fall through the next step. But if they don't, we build in a clever way to follow up with them later to hope to entice them into booking a call. The level of difficulty of this workflow is basic. Here are the general requirements. You'll need a paid active campaign account with a plus plan or greater. Second, you need a Calendly account, free or otherwise. Third, you'll need an active website or landing page. Now before we dive into building our form, you'll require several particular items associated with the aforementioned software tools. Within Active Campaign, you'll need to have an existing list. Our new leads must go onto that list. Second, also within Active Campaign, I suggest you create a custom field of the text area variety called Comments or Questions. This isn't required but recommended. If you don't know how to create a custom field, it's not within the scope of this video to explain how to do that. So you can ignore this if that's the case. Lastly, you'll need a separate thank you page on your website or within your landing page software. We need to redirect here after we submit our active campaign form. This is where we'll embed our Calendly calendar. Now it's time to jump into active campaign to start building our form. First navigate to the forms area where we'll create a form from scratch. Now click create a form and choose inline form. Now let's give it a name. We'll simply call ours test contact form. As mentioned earlier, we need a list to wish to add our new lead. So I'm going to add it to my sales lead customer list. When we arrive to our new form, we'll notice that we have a full name field and email field by default. As a best practice, we want to include as few fields as possible because this results in higher conversions. Prospects don't want to be bogged down by a huge list of questions, so let's keep our fields to a bare minimum while still gathering the most vital info. For technical reasons, I like splitting first name and last name into two different fields. So I'm going to eliminate the full name field and replace that with first name and last name. We already have email, so the last thing we'll add is the questions, comments area I recommended. Unless you want to lend a helping hand to active campaigns marketing efforts, you can come over here under style and turn off their branding you see at the bottom of the form. The basics of our form are now built. So let's go to options so we can manipulate some of the back end functionality. 
First, we need to set our redirect to the thank you page we set up. We do that by navigating to this dropdown and choosing Open URL. Now let's populate our thank you page URL. Next, we need to adjust a setting regarding single or double opt-in. I'm not going to go into detail about what this means here. It merits a discussion of its own. But for the simple workflow, I recommend we switch our settings to single opt-in. Click the sprocket here and toggle off opt-in confirmation. Now we're going to add an action, and in this case, we'll tag these submissions as contact form submission. This isn't necessary, but this may be useful later for segmentation of the reasons. I don't want to go into detail now about my reasoning, but this is an option for you to consider. Lastly, we're going to add another action, which is email results. When somebody submits a form, I want to be notified by email. So our form should be functional and ready. You'll notice it's quite ugly and we made no effort to add any style just yet. I did this intentionally. Functionality always comes before aesthetics and automation. An ugly form that functions can still convert and generate you revenues. A beautiful form that's broken will never convert or make you any revenues. I can't stress this enough. Functionality always supersedes aesthetics and importance. That said, we'll indeed style the form in part two of this lesson after we make sure our form works. So let's now test our form. First click Integrate. We then click on the tab called Link and copy that link. We'll then open a new tab in our browser and paste links so that we can then complete a form submission. I populated some data and now I'll click Submit. First we see that our redirect worked, which is good. I'm also going to check my inbox and verify that my notification email arrived, which it did. And lastly, we'll check to see if the contact arrived correctly into our AC database. And here we see it did. That ends part one of our video. To see how to integrate Calendly into this flow, please watch part two. We hope you enjoyed our video for today. Stay tuned for more updates by joining our blog and subscribing to our YouTube channel. Bye, and we hope to see you again soon.